hopefully be back to work in another month. So I appreciate all the prayers. Good. Well, good. Good. Good morning, Thank everybody. You. Sorry, we're a little late. We were sharing some unshareable uh, prayer requests. And so we are going to go live. Session 10, <clears throat> which is entitled Enduring. Second Thessalonians 1, 3 through 12 is our verse verses um so let's go ahead and go through the prayer requests that we can go through okay uh we were you have a, a puzzled look sharon is no okay <laughs> did you have an, a, a a prayer request no. okay and donna you shared yeah. cappy everything going yeah i do have a friend a classmate uh -huh. that just found out she has cancer and oh, her no. name is betty and she'll be going tomorrow for her check to see if it's in her lymph nodes and everything but she just has gone through her daughter daughter's cancer for two years and oh bless her heart oh bless her heart but oh she asked for sure sure uh pat you and jerry uh we're doing uh keep us in prayer and the john relvis r-e-l-v-a-s family he was very good friends with Jerry in the army. He passed away Monday. And so pray for the family. Sure. And Jerry. Sure, sure. Miss Mary? My husband got a, was kind of a price report. Uh -huh. He uh, won the Supreme Court for his disability, but we got to go back to court to, to the same judge again so y'all can continue to pray for us. Mm -hmm. And from me because I have no energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Margie? Just keep this hot in your place. Sure will. Nina? We're all right. Doing good. You had a nice reception yesterday. Thank Congratulations you. again. Miss <laughs> Dawn, <laughs> you got a big answer to prayer. Well, uh, we've gotten an agreement. Now, whether it happens that there's an acceptance, that's a whole nother ball game. Um, we're still trying to get a hold of Marie. So y'all keep Marie and the kiddos in prayer. I know you've been praying for them, but <clears throat> just continue that she'll agree to the terms and conditions of what we've been able to help her with. Um, anybody heard from Mary Alice Stewart or from Mary Stewart mm -hmm. and Alice Ann? She's going to have knee surgery, so um, pray for her. Uh, Jeannie Lou's cousin, do we know how she's doing? She's doing real well. Um, the last report I got, she has lost all of her hair now, but she seems to be real good spirits. She's that, a real good Christian woman, so she's got God on her side. Okay. Uh, then Jan Tankersley, legs and back. I'm going to move really fast. And Martin Mobility, Dave Young, as far as I know, he's doing well from the amputation. Chastity and Barbara Ritter, uh, Kelly's friend, uh, Jara, with a diff difficult pregnancy. Oh, doing it, she they said that she was fine. She was just, the baby had run out of space. Oh, know, my. And, and that was why it wasn't moving as much, you know, because that happens. That happened. I was having Kristen, and is she just needed to hydrate more, and she's great now, and the baby's great. Well, praise the Lord. Yes, and so thank you for the prayers. We're bouncing the camera by writing. Sorry about that. If you got seasick watching us, Dramamine will help. Oh, don't do that. I have to answer the dings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, John Wyman in, with First City Church in Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, camp staff coming up. Uh, church camp, yay! Mary Stewart asked, uh, no, Mary Wright Sucral. Mary Sucral asked to be remembered uh, this week, especially she's got an unspoken uh, health. So there we go. Uh, let's let's just start and we're going to hopefully move quickly and catch up. <laughs> Sweet Master, we thank you that, Lord God, Thank you for not being too busy or too behind to listen to me when I come to you with my heartbreak, with my struggles, with my sorrows. Thank you, Lord, for taking time for me and for each of these people and for the ones that are on our hearts that 
for whatever reason we didn't call them out out loud. You're so good to us, God, and we just thank you. Open our hearts and minds as we study, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe Paula read first last week, so Miss Nina, will you start us? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. That you may not be soon shaken in mind or be in trouble, neither by spirit nor by word, not letter, as all of us, as that of the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except their coming falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above the one that is called God, for that is worship, so that he is, he asked God, oh, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You're, you should be on 11. How come you were on 10? Because I was using the prayer list and I didn't have it written on 11. The Dawn and Mary show continues. <sighs> Second Thessalonians two one through twelve. Yeah. Mary doesn't read. No, you don't read. Okay. okay. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that with holdeth what with holdeth that he might be revealed in his time. <laughs> For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now restraining will do so until he is out of the way. And then shall <clears throat> that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy <laughs> with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose <clears throat> coming is after the word of working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them has perished, because they received not the love of truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. That they all might be down to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. And... <clears throat> I have to admire the gentleman who uh, translated, put in commas and punctuation. You know, the Greeks just all run together. Uh, Paul is the champion and hero of run-on sentences. Some of his sentences span three and four verses. Lots of commas, lots of semicolons, lots of flashbacks so uh, it leaves us with a great amount of flexibility and the thing that I want you to take away from today is Jesus wins and because Jesus wins we win and because we have confidence in Christ we don't have to spend a whole lot of time worrying about how is it going to happen? Although I do because I'm very nosy and curious and, and, and I'm not the only one because the Bible says even in Hebrews, even the angels look to see what God is doing and what he's about. And uh, good morning, uh, Jan. Uh, something just changed on the screen and it hummed. So I, I'm nosy. I had to look. Uh, beseech is a very strong word. Paul is begging the Thessalonians because you know that Jesus is coming. Because you trust him. Don't fret. Don't fret. Don't fret. <gasps> you do not have to raise your hands, but is any else anyone else in the room a worrier? <laughs> I am. And Howard has said, my word, woman, if you did not have something to worry about, you would go to the window and watch for somebody to go by so you could worry about them. You know? Um, I my mom, I'm not going to change your hair from uh, brown to gray, you know? Don't worry, <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> the same thing. Easier said than done. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the worst. I mean, if there's anything, I would wake up in the middle of the night worrying about it. I mean, I just can't. How do you handle that? As a Christian, how do you handle that? I pray. I start praying. And sometimes if I'm really stuck on stuff, I get out the Bible and start reading. And usually um, whatever passage I open to is what I needed right then. And it's yeah. Like, Isn't God amazing? He yeah. can even turn yeah. pages. Yeah, because it's, it's like, um, you know, one of my favorite ones is be calm and know that the, the Lord is God. I think that's kind of yeah yeah be still and know that i'm god like, right yeah, and it just you know and and it's like yes and he Don't says that it. over and over and over mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. and uh jesus comes walking on the water in the storm he's coming to help and the the apostles oh my gosh oh my gosh there's a ghost we're all gonna die and jesus said "Don't do not fear it's me. So we're in good company, number one. And and those guys were strong men. They were fishermen, so they knew that body of water. They knew the capability of their boat. And, and they'd been with Jesus, so they knew he <clears throat> is the overcomer. And yet here they are in a tough situation, and, and they panic. And they worry and they fret. And Jesus says to them, calm down, calm down. So Paul is saying again, calm, take a deep breath, just breathe. I watched a silly movie uh, with Sandra Bullock, The Lost City of Something, uh, this week. And uh, the hero's line was, breathe with me breathe with me and it was so funny because it, it's it's a funny movie and it's a nice clean movie if you want to watch a nice clean movie uh paul says uh don't be shaken whether it's uh a letter or whether it's uh a new guy you have salvation you have the word of god don't be shaken don't change your mind and I, uh, we have some wonderful wonderful denominations that have used that as uh, that anchor as their name the old path the hard rock you'll drive past and and see uh the word anchor in the church's name or on their sign walk down the hall and see the bible kids uh kids bible club banner says anchored in the word anchored in the rock anchored in the rock and so you want to be like king arthur's sword stuck in the rock and nobody could pull it out except the coming king you want to be like that. And I know those are a lot of uh, fairy tale illusions, but uh, if you research King Arthur, there's a kernel of truth somewhere back in that legend. So even though they're mythical or story time illusions, there's truth in that. You can put your anchor in Christ. And Paul says, no matter what anybody else tells you, God is in control. God has it. Don't be fooled. Uh, you're going to know. You're going to know. And uh, I was very disappointed this week as I did my research. I find, found out that uh, one of my heroes that I study with, Bob Utley, is wrong. I hope. I hope. He's 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 a post millennialist. I hope he's wrong. I, <laughs> I hope he's wrong. <laughs> and he said, I just don't see the things happening that the Bible says has to happen. Of course, now when he preached that sermon, his hair was brown and now he's an old man with white hair. He may have changed his mind. Who would have thought that things would move as rapidly in the United States as they have with COVID? And can you believe that it started in 2019 and here it's 2022? But 
Think of all the stuff that's come about. And did we ever think that would happen? And it happened so quickly. So uh, Paul says, don't be deceived. Things are going to have to happen. There's going to have to be a great falling away. Well, I'm not saying that Christ's coming is this week or tomorrow or the day after. I'm not going to set a date, but it's close because a full 20%, I, I want to say it's closer to a quarter of evangelical, not just Southern Baptist, but evangelical churches did not reopen after COVID. People, I think the numbers are higher. I think that's just what was reported. I don't want to overstate it. I'm, I'm trying to be conservative, but a tremendous number. It's terrifying. Of, of established churches mm. just quit. Yeah, we're not talking new churches. We're talking churches that have been going on for over hundreds of years. Just and, and people saying, my couch is comfortable. My couch is comfortable. And I'll just stay here in my pajamas and watch uh, Adrian Rogers or Charles Stanley. And that's good. If you want to watch them, those those guys are solid and you should enjoy as you're getting ready to go and join your brothers and sisters. But let me tell you what. But we're given a warning. Do not forsake, forsake the assembling the of yourselves together. As some do. There's a blessing. To seeing one another and being in corporate worship anyway. Uh, so there's going to be a great falling away. And we were discussing today's lesson at the dinner table. And and uh, I can't remember if it was Greg or Howard said, I see it. I see a great revival sweeping the nation, especially among the teenagers and the very young. Not the, the 20 or 30 somethings, but the teens. Great numbers. And uh, someone was saying... This, I think it was just yesterday they were calling a preacher's name and he's he's having wonderful, he's doing tent meetings and he's he's having great responses. People are packing in like Billy Graham used to pack the house and people are getting saved and yet churches are closing. So Paul says uh, there's going to be a falling away and yet there's going to be a great revival uh, the man of sin has to be revealed who uh, opposes himself above all that's called God and seeks worship. Now, we've got some pretty big egos out there. But as far as I know, we don't have somebody at this particular moment in time claiming to be God. We've had a few, but uh, we don't. We don't, but North Korea and places like that. Yes, yes. I was reading a book about the, the, what they expect all of the citizens to do and that how, uh, when I forgot his name, but when that one that had been there for so long, when he died, so many of them were like, they couldn't believe because they really thought he was God. And they were like, how can God die? Yeah. Which is just so sad that that's how that is a nation enslaved and bewitched yes, it is it is and then they're just the things the tortures and the things that they do those people just if they won't stand there and worship you know, I mean, it just. but but yeah I, i'm glad we're not to that point yet yeah we don't get there but. yeah uh who do you think in in verse six or what do you think now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed. Something's holding back this final rise of evil. Who or what do you think that is? That's uh, verse six. Who do you think that is? God. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Howard has often pondered that he thinks it's the Holy Spirit in the form of the church because of the indwell, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and when the rapture comes, the Holy Spirit leaves because he's with us. And uh, so it could be that. And Christ laments even, will there even be a church when I return? Yeah. Will there be any faith on the earth when the Son of Man returneth? That comes out of Christ's mouth. 
So that makes me wonder with that great falling away. And then, and then in verse seven, the mystery of iniquity, that that's the full power of Satan's nasty and the antichrist and the false prophet and the confusion that is going to come with them. Uh, it's already working and we can see it working. But the last half of verse seven, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. God's in control. Now that's that's a confusing sentence structure there, but it boils down to God's in control. God's in control. Mary, don't worry about it. God's got this. When that wicked thing, and here's here's Paul with his convoluted sentences, that wicked be revealed, and wicked shows up uh Skip the rest of verse eight and he shows up <laughs> in verse nine. Him whose coming is after the work of Satan, and he's gonna have uh he's gonna do signs and wonders, and he's gonna be a liar, and he's going to lie to everybody. And boy, how he do is not the spirit of deceit at work in the world today. Woo! And I uh, I feel sorry for anybody who's running for public office because if you don't lie like a dog, you're not going to get elected. And there's not a one of them, not a one of them can do all the things that they promise or that they want to when they get in there. Now, I'm real proud of our mayor, Randy Tankersley, and I'm not ashamed to say it. And he gets out there and he works and he tries hard. but even Randy uh, couldn't completely turn the charging elephant that is government to do what he knows is absolutely the best and the right. Even he has to go so far and then stop because he has to work with other people. And if it's that with someone who you know is a godly man, can you imagine how hard it is in Congress or in the Senate or in the military to be a lover of God and to want to do that which is right and to be opposed by all of these forces of evil? And it looks like they're winning. It looks like, but they're not. Uh, he says, they're going to die. They're going to perish. Why are they going to perish? Are they going to, why are the people that are wicked going to die? I'm going to ask you, why are the people who are wicked going to die? God's going to clean house. Why? <clears throat> because he said he would. Well, yeah, but is it because they lied? Is it because they murdered? Is it because they burned houses down and stole. Because they refused his son. There you go. There you go. The rest of it is forgivable, but refusing his son is not. There you go. And that's in verse 10. They received not the love of truth. They didn't want to love God. They didn't want to love God. And this, this is the perfect place to stop and say that if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, it is not so complicated that you cannot understand it. It is very simple. It is not easy, but it is simple. Confess that you are wrong. Admit that God has provided Jesus Christ, his son, born of a virgin, who died for you and accepted the payment, uh, accepted your sin and made payment for that. And ask him to forgive your sin and be the boss of your life. It's that simple. But living it out is a lot harder because when God begins to work in your heart, he's going to change things. Not to fit Mary's definition of what's right, but to fit God's definition you know, of what's right. Practicing living the truth, walking the truth. Uh -huh. You know, uh, 
years ago, there's a, a book uh, by uh, Gary Chapman and Beth, I forget her other name, but it's uh, Truth Talk, Telling Yourself and Others the Truth. Mm -hmm. It's a very good book. If you can get a reprint, do, because it has exercises in it every chapter. I have a book. I go through it every year. However, uh, walking the truth is difficult in that, not that it's, like we said, it's simple. It's like living a minimalist life unless you give up your desire to have all that clutter. It is going to sneak in all that crap. You're going to hold on to one piece of paper that you really don't need to. You're not going to throw it into the trash can. Okay. You're not going to do your daily cleaning. If, if you want to just have the bed, the chair, and, and you guys have seen pictures of minimalist homes where it's just the firm and they're very beautiful to, to, to look at them, <coughs> very beautiful. The reason most of us don't find it beautiful is because we are accustomed to having a ton of stuff around us and we don't feel comfortable with the simple. It is the same way in life, not walking the truth, not doing the simple. We overcomplicate it. We have to justify what we are doing that we know is wrong and we lie to ourselves about that. When I figured that out, And it's, it's simple, what God says. Just tell me the truth. And tell yourself the truth. And when you do that, you can cut out all of the extra unnecessary stuff that you complicate your life with. And we're supposed to be teaching other people how to cut out that complicated and unnecessary. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. I love the idea of uh, the slogan that was around uh, several years ago. Uh, what would Jesus do? Now it got run into the ground and it, it got printed on some stuff it should never have been printed on. But the idea is good. Stop and think. What would Jesus do? Well, if you're walking the truth and keeping it simple, you are less likely to be deceived because if you're practicing it, you're, you're exercising and disciplining yourself in the way you can't lie to somebody who sees the truth for what it is because they're not lying and they stand there. And every one of us has had a conversation with somebody when they called us on our mess. And how embarrassing is that when you're confronted straight out with a person that says, <coughs> it's your lie. You can tell it any way you want to, but I don't <laughs> believe you. <laughs> is it not like you go from here to go, Ooh. oh, yeah, about that, about that. And then you have a choice. Do you say, I'm sorry, here's the truth, which is really, really difficult because we lose face. It's a pride thing. Yeah. Or are we totally submitted to God and say, as mom's famous to say, catch it before they say it, even though the twinkle in their eye is, you're lying. I've caught you. You say, is it snowing in New York? Because I think I've just lied to you. <laughs> that shocks people when you look at them and go, uh, no, that's not true. I just lied to you. Let me back up mm -hmm. and re-say my words. And please forgive me for doing that. Shocks people. But it happens, does it not? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's, that and the fact, and, and when you when you are trying to do your very best, and you get into a mess, and you realize you're in a mess, just stop. Yeah, it's the biggest lie in the world to say I have to keep on yeah, and finish this. It no, makes it I worse. I just have to say, you know. I'm through with this conversation. We're going to change the subject. Or I'm through doing what I'm doing because this is a really big. I'm in I'm sin. Not participating in it's, anymore. I'm not. I'm Peggy. I'm not telling you you're in sin. I'm saying for me, this is sin. I can't do it. And I got to stop. I'm in sin. And and the Lord may not convict you about it. 
You may not be in sin, but the Lord's pricking my heart about it. And, and because Peggy's a real kind person, she goes, no problem. I think we're going to go shopping. Have you been at this store over here? She's going to change the subject completely. She's going to allow me. Uh, Judith Vorst used to write a column called Miss Manners in the paper. And I loved reading it because people got in jams as bad as I do. And I loved knowing that I'm not in the boat by myself. Yes. And one time she said, about 90% of good manners is pretending that what is happening is not happening and just going on, you know? Uh, my guest has just knocked over his water glass and it ran across the table and pushed the pudding into Alice's lap and Alice is purple with rage and I'm just going on and talking to Dawn and I hand the butler a towel and he mops it up and I just pretend it never happened. I don't make the person who spilled the tea feel bad. I don't make the person who got angry feel bad. I just kept on loving Jesus. You know, and that's the whole point is not condemning someone else, but just keeping on loving Jesus. Donna may be a post millennialist. I'm having trouble with that word. She may believe that we don't get raptured out until after the millennium. And that's fine. Her belief system, what she thinks about the chronological sequence should not affect how I treat Kathy or Margie or Mary or Pat or Nina or any of the rest of you. I should be obeying what I know that the Lord wants me to do. And there's there's the end that the gate swings on. Is minding my own business, doing what God has told me to do. God has told me, as you go, tell the gospel. Live the gospel so that people believe it when you speak the gospel. I didn't call you, Mary, to be a judge of anybody. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Do I fall in that jar? Well, look at her. Can you believe she didn't look in the mirror before she left the house this morning? Or I would have never said that. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Or how could she treat so and so like that? I just can't believe. And she says she's a Christian. God didn't make me their judge. The best adage I've ever heard and have exercised myself that therefore the grace of God go I. Absolutely. Every single one of us should be in jail. None of us is going to get to heaven really? on anything. And the reason we're not there is because we didn't get caught and arrested. None of us is going to get to heaven on anything but the grace of Jesus and the blood of Calvary. That's it. And, and he says, those that die will die because they didn't want to receive that gift. Uh, when our kids were little, <laughs> Dawn was, was uh, leave my alone was her thing. She'd had enough. Leaf my say it alone. Occasionally, even as an adult, leaf my alone. Yes, but Jeff was do it myself. Do it myself. And let, you can't make me <laughs> let go of those shoestrings. I'll tie it. No, you can't tie. I will. I will. How many fishing lures did Dad lose? <laughs> but we can't do it myself. And we dare not say, leave me alone. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. And we need each other not to judge us. But <clears throat> Kathy's going to come up and say, Mary, I see you struggled a little with that today. Let me pray with you. Or I'm going to go to the altar and Nana's going to come and pray with me. Or Peggy will come and pray with me. We need one another. 
it's important to remember, even in our society today, we have a sense of entitlement, every one of us, yes. every one of us. And I'm going to remind everyone, especially if you live in the United States, every ticket written by law enforcement has jail time available for the judge to provide to you. When you walk into a court of law, I don't care if you jaywalked across the street, the judge can put you in jail. Yeah, be nice when there you go to court. There is no offense. My whole point is, it's like sin. There is no offense so small that jail being put away, taken out of society, removed from your job role or your family or friends and put behind bars can happen. Absolutely. It's, it's the same with God said, without Christ dying on the cross with the blood, to pay for that sentence, there's no mercy. We are totally under the law. Without Christ, we're under under the law. When we refuse grace, we choose the law. We choose the law. And we are susceptible to another person's mercy. When you go to court and you stand in front of them on that ticket, are you guilty or not guilty? Did you do it? Did the cop catch you? Was he right? He is only an enforcer of the law. He has spent his time learning about what the law says and training his eyes, one, to detect when people are lying, and two, to catch them at what they're doing. Their enforcement is <clears throat> their job. It's the judge's job to find out if you're telling the truth or not based on solely what you say and what the officer says. And without grace, when we get to heaven, if we have accepted Christ, there is no mercy. There's no mercy. When God judges those people who have not accepted Christ, they stand the full account of the law. And what does the word say? For the wages of sin is death. And that brings us to the very last verse, that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. Wow. Next week, Second Thessalonians 2, 13 through 3, 5, talking about praying. And what happened to the pile of books that was they've been dispersed they've been dispersed okay <laughs> you have there's there's that, there's more left down one here and the one that's the common here the that'll leaders. teach me to be late that'll I, teach me to I be saved late your leader's book <laughs> thank you let's close with prayer <laughs> father god we thank you so much for this time together we thank you for knowing that you want the best for us that you as as our father wants to take care of each one of these children and yet you are not afraid to discipline us thank you father that you did not design hell for us we ask oh god that you help us to tell each and every one of those people that are around us and in our sphere of influence about your wonderful and glorious plan to save us from punishment. God, lead us and direct us, guide us. Prepare our hearts as we go into worship. Help us to truly comprehend your reckless love for us. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.